Now, um, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, how do I guess, how do I put this? Um, let's just call this various aspects of unemployment. Not really sure how to categorize all three of these categories into, into one thing. Um, okay, so... Let's start first with cyclical versus natural unemployment. The idea that economists have here is that for natural unemployment, there are always going to be people that are unemployed in any economy. And the two natures of this unemployment is that people can be frictionally unemployed and that people can be structurally unemployed. To be frictionally unemployed means that you're choosing to find another employer. <laughs> Either the choice is imposed upon you because you got fired or you just decide to leave. So it's called frictional because we're just saying a market has just natural frictions to it where people are changing jobs from time to time. Structurally unemployed is much more serious. It basically means that you're unemployed because you have the wrong skill set, right? Like I have outdated skills. So if I knew an ancient programming language, it's going to be hard for me to find a job. And I'm going to be unemployed for an incredibly long period of time because um, right, no one wants my ancient um, coding skills. In the U.S., the approximation is that the natural unemployment rate for an economy is 5%. Then, we add on to that those who are cyclically unemployed. And that would be people who are unemployed <coughs> because of the economy. Right? When the economy is not doing well, more people are unemployed. So this basically adds on, these two add up to the actual unemployment rate. But you're probably looking at this and right now you're seeing, oh, the unemployment rate is 4.2% meaning that we're actually below 5%. So how can cyclically be negative? Cyclically can be negative if we're hiring people we wouldn't normally hire, but we're only hiring them because the economy is doing so well. So maybe people that have like a light criminal history, eh, weirdos, creeps, right? We might hire those people because the economy is doing so well. But if the economy wasn't doing well, let's say we were in a recession, then maybe you would have 6% of the people unemployed because of the bad performance of the economy. And you would add those up and say, ah, the total actual unemployment rate is 11%. 5% it always exists, 6% is happening because of the performance of the economy. Now, I say this because you actually don't want too low of unemployment. So the fact that right now, as of October um, of 2017, um, the unemployment rate is less than 5%, that's bad. So we are at a rate right now of less than natural unemployment. You don't want low unemployment because it causes prices to rise. It causes prices to rise because then you've got lots of people spending their money because they're all working, and firms have to raise their prices because they have to pay their workers more because their workers are incredibly scarce. Um, so you actually don't want 0% unemployment. You always want some people out of work because it allows you to control prices and control wages. I know that sounds bad and uncaring, but um, it is actually true. Um, <coughs> that because you have some people out of work, you can then um, can keep prices lower and you can keep wages lower. Um, that's generally a good thing here. Now, 
we also see that some people become unemployed because wages are sticky. So what do we mean by stage wages are sticky? Sticky wages means that they are not likely to move in a downward direction. And the reason why they're unlikely to move in a downward direction is who wants to get their pay reduced, right? People don't like that happening. So because of, there's a lot of institutional limitations and it does really bad things for employee morale, um, wages tend to be sticky, meaning they don't move in the downward direction very often. Because wages don't move in the downward direction, you can see unemployment being caused here. Rather than lowering everyone's wages, maybe I just get rid of some workers, um, which obviously then can increase unemployment. Also, Unemployment can be caused by efficiency wages. Efficiency wages are when I pay my workers more than the minimum wage. Um, even employers like McDonald's and Walmart and Target don't pay the um, minimum wage. They tend to pay something more because you, know, you get some pretty bad workers when you're paying just the minimum wage. These are pretty bad workers. You have to offer a much higher wage to get good workers, which means because you have to offer a much higher wage, that means that you're going to have some unemployment caused um, by these individuals existing. <coughs> But then the final part of this video as well is that um, we have to think about how productivity um, figures into all this. As workers become more productive, as workers become more productive, Some people become unemployed. That's not bad. Um, that's not bad to have productivity going up, right? Because it means basically we can do more stuff with fewer people working. But obviously, it has a social consequence. Um, so, right, so we see in some countries, for instance, um, you can't. Um, you know, like when I go to Walmart, they have those like self-checkout centers and you usually see one employee managing like four different self-checkout stations. So that means that that one worker is pretty productive because they're basically managing four checkout lanes. Um, that means that there's three people out of work, right? So that worker is more productive, but basically I've limited their um, activities. Um that means that there are some unemployed checkout uh, checkout people, cashiers. Um, is that good? Is that bad? Well, some societies think that's bad, and so they create laws that forbid um, these kinds of things. A, a good example of this that people typically critique is France, that France has certain laws where um, stores can't be 24-hour stores or um, you know, certain labor practices are not allowed because of this thing. <coughs>